And if there is one thing that I am sure of is the fact that the foundation is crumbling under our feet. The foundation that was built on the truth of the Word of God is systematically being dismantled. And that is why I'm calling this series of messages, The Truth, The Most Endangered Species. We all have been seeing of late how government leaders and politicians and mainstream media, how their disregard for the truth that's causing our society literally to lose its mooring. But this near extinction of the truth in our society did not start with the government. It started with the church. And it's no use pointing fingers. The fingers need to be pointed at us. For I have said this, and I will say it till the day I die. As goes the church, so goes society. As goes the pulpit, so goes the culture. For over 50 or more years ago, mainline Christian denominations began to depart wholesale departure from biblical truth, and society has followed. Then today, uh, this destruction of biblical truth, which started in the mainline liberal denominations, is now invading what is so-called evangelical churches. The word evangelical just uh, now came to mean anything and everything that I hardly call myself an evangelical anymore. But this molestation of the truth is no longer over there in the liberal land. It's right there in the evangelical churches. It's in our midst. The so-called emerging church, which is attracting hordes of young people, they are on a mission to blur the truth. They're on a mission to undermine the truth. They're on a mission to muddy the truth. They're on a mission to eclipse the truth. Some of their gurus are teaching that the Christian message should be kept ambiguous, deliberately. And millions of young people are drinking this Kool-Aid. They're reading their books and they're following their teaching. Rob Bell said that about the new, this new type of Christianity that he had discovered. He said, the Bible is in the center for us, but it's a different kind of center. Well, how many centers are there? McLaren declared that it is true humility to acknowledge that we are uncertain about the truth. True humility. <laughs> That's the height of arrogance. Please listen to me. Uncertainty, doubt, tolerance, skepticism is today's gospel, according to the emerging church. The foundation is being destroyed. And the Bible said when the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? This subtle deception of the modern called Christian evangelical writers in misleading young people into thinking that if we're going to reach the postmodern culture of today, we not only should speak the language, but we should ape them. But in the process, what they do, they're adapting the Christian faith to culture instead of calling culture to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The one passion they have is they want to be accepted by society. And that's a danger for all of us. The moment you set your sights on being accepted, on being liked by the world and by accepted by society, that's where danger is. What they're doing is they basically reviving the old liberalism of apostasy, except they're putting it in a new dress. And unbelievers are saying, we love this type of Christianity. We love this kind of ambiguity. We love this type of doubt. We love this type of uncertainty. It suits us fine. And the first casualty of this type of assault is the truth. And yet Jesus said, 
you shall know the truth. Not be ambiguous about the truth. You shall know the truth. In fact, the word know is that you're going to believe the truth. And when you go to the believe the truth, that truth is going to set you free. In John chapter 8, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching and you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Not doubting the truth, not muddying the truth, not being convoluted about the truth, not being deliberately vague about the truth. No, he said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The idea that the Christian message should be kept pliable, ambiguous, uh, is a very popular one, particularly among young, young people, which it breaks my heart. Because by nature, we all love the spirit of the age. We all love to live worldly lives. Sadly, I get to see genuine Christians who get caught in these falsehoods. And they are devastated. I meet them on the other side of the devastation. And I say genuine believers because, listen to me, not everybody who goes to church is a genuine believer. Not every pastor who stands in the pulpit is a genuine believer in the truth of Jesus Christ. And the Bible warns us about the wolves in sheep's clothing. And that is why... There is a warning that comes to us from the epistle of Jude, and it is extremely relevant to our culture. Jude, half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, wrote only one epistle, this one chapter, which I will be studying in the next several weeks. The epistle of Jude is all about the truth of our faith and the vital importance for genuine believers to contend for that truth. Contending for the truth is the key word in that whole chapter. You remember Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, he said, what is truth? And Jesus, of course, saw in that question his dismissive attitude, so he would not answer the question. And yet Jesus again and again confirmed to the disciples, what is the truth? He told them over and over the importance of knowing the truth, of believing the truth. Why? Listen to me, because truth impacts every thought that we have. Truth colors every belief that we hold dear. Truth surrounds every relationship that we, that we get into. Truth frames every fact in life. Truth guides every thought that we have. So what is the truth? According to the Word of God, truth is God's self-revelation. Truth is everything that to do with God, with the mind of God and with the will of God, and with the character of God. And that is why God is the original author of the truth. He is the source of all truth. He is the decider of the standards of the truth. He is the final judge of expression of the truth. And that is why the Old Testament speaks of God as the God of all truth. Not just a little bit of it, all of it. Jesus, who is the full revelation of God the Father, said, I am the truth. Jesus and Jesus alone is the truth incarnate. Jesus alone is the perfect expression of God's truth. Jesus alone is, the, is God's self-revealing of the truth. The Christian faith does not just contain some truth. And then the other religions contain other truths. And when all the religions get together and hold hand and sing Kumbaya, we have all the truth. See, that's what some evangelicals are teaching. And that is modern day idolatry. Jesus is the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, there is no truth apart from him. There is no truth besides Him. There is no truth equal to Him. There is no truth that exists away from Him. And no wonder the main characteristics of the postmodern culture, which many a church are emulating today, the main characteristic is the rejection of any expression of certainty of the truth. 
In other words, they say, there are many truths. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hear me right on this one. There can be no freedom from sin and guilt apart from Jesus, who is the truth. There can be no freedom from self-doubt and self-loathing apart from Jesus, who is the truth. There can be no freedom from fear and anxiety and worry apart from Jesus, who is the truth. There can be no freedom from the performance trap apart from Jesus, who is the truth. There can be no freedom from hatred and bitterness and anger apart from Jesus, who is the truth. There can be no freedom from pride and failure apart from Jesus, who is the truth.